Hey, what's going on everyone? Dave Casher just announced 18.3 and it is a doozy. I'm so excited we finally have that separator workout. I know weeks one and week two, most of us could do in some way, shape or form RX. And obviously the top athletes in the world were crushing it, but for the rest of us, we could compete as well. Now this one's a little different. We're starting with double unders, which I remember, I forget what year it was, the first time Dave Casher started with double unders in the open, instead of it being it somewhere towards the end or the middle, it was literally the first movement in a workout and people were so angry. And the response from Dave Casher was, what did you think you're signing up for, double unders or a simple movement? So the same thing's gonna happen with this, right? We have 100 double unders, 20 overhead squats, 100 double unders, 12 ring muscle ups, 100 double unders, 20 dumbbell snatches, 100 double unders, 12 bar muscle ups, and we go through that again with a 14 minute cap. Um, it's funny, it's like a 14 minute AMRAP, it's really a cap, right? If you watch tonight, you see the athletes didn't finish it, and Dave Castro threw out a little challenge, because he didn't think anyone would, but now looking at it, he thinks that some of those top athletes might be able to get through it. Now, if we look at this, if you first year doing the open, you might be upset because 115, 80 pounds might be a little heavy for you. That is a lightweight in the world of CrossFit competition. Okay, and that's light form. Um, 100 double unders might seem like a lot. It is if you make it all the way through the two rounds, it's 800 double unders, but 100 double unders in a set is not uncommon in the world of CrossFit on CrossFit.com or in uh, the games and regional stuff like that, right? It does pop up. Muscle ups is not a tremendous amount of volume, but again, you need that skill. Now, everything that I'm talking about right now is all dependent upon the idea that you have these skills in place. If you don't, you're gonna to wanna to grease the groove a lot more, um, especially on the ring muscle ups and bar muscle ups. If you know you got one or two, you wanna grease the groove, work on it, spend more time practicing, so you don't have any doubt in your mind when you get into the workout, okay? Don't make the workout your warm up for those movements. Sometimes we see people, they wanna save energy, by not doing too much before the workout. I don't understand it. You're not saving energy. You really just set yourself up for failure sometimes. So um, I used to work in track and field a while ago with my wife. The shortest events actually had the biggest warm up. You need the warm up. You'd be amazed how long we had athletes warming up for races. It could be a 40 minute warm up before they go. And these kids were doing great. They're running nationals. They weren't kind of blowing up during the race. They're doing really, really well. So now that we talked about what the workout is, Let's move on to some notes, some things that we wanna keep in mind. And we will get to a warm up in a little bit. So number one, there is a tie break time and that's gonna matter. Um, especially for those of us that maybe those ring muscle ups and bar muscle ups are a little slow. We wanna remember there's a tie break after every set of double unders. It's important, make sure your judge knows before you get into it as well. Threshold, there's fatigue, mental and physical. I'll we'll talk about that in a second. Grip and then calves, right? Lots of double unders, lots of grip between things. You wanna make sure you don't get to the point where your fine motor skills go away. Because double unders, they are simple, but they can be a fine motor skill, especially if you're not that great at them, or if 100 unbroken isn't kind of a normal thing for you. So you wanna make sure you break before you're broken on that. Because once you get fatigued, that's when your gross motor skills take over and those little movements kind of go away. So um, someone out there, the Spear System, um, he's part of CrossFit as well, he talks about that, your bridge between gross and fine motor skills in fighting. It happens in fights as well once that adrenaline goes up, or excuse me, in workouts as well, once adrenaline goes up. Now fatigue, I'm not just talking about muscular, I'm talking about mental as well. Because as soon as you start messing up double unders, maybe you start failing at muscle ups if they're not a great skill for you, if they're not a strength for you, you start getting mentally fatigued. So again, you wanna have in your mind, break before you are broken. Okay, break before you're broken. Especially if you're one of those athletes that's not gonna be able to move through this well, you're probably gonna get a second chance at it if you really wanna do better. Not necessarily recommending that, but sometimes we wanna do that if we wanna get a better score. All right, break before you're broken, mentally and physically. Now when it comes to muscle ups, you need to know the rule on the bar muscle up. We see a lot of people do bar muscle ups, and they're so excited and they post it on social media and I'm super proud for you. But if those feet come above the pull-up bar, it doesn't count as a bar muscle up in the world of CrossFit competitions. As well as at the top, sometimes we'll see people rest their hips on the bar, shake out their arms, push away and go back into it. That does not count. Your hands have to stay on the bar the whole time, as well as you need to make sure that no other part of your body, besides those hands, besides those hips, you can't touch any part of the arm rather, your forearm, your bicep, you can't do this little crawl thing up. So watch out for those feet. If you're not used to it, practice it, video it, ask your judge if it's good. Now, when it comes to the dumbbell snatch, Dave Castro changed this year. We have seen a lot of people drop from overhead and switch it on the way down, literally drop from overhead. Um, I'm not sure why Dave Castro switched the rule. I know for me, we used to see a lot of people end up here and then drop it, and they're never really hitting full extension. The new rule on the dumbbell snatch is that you have to switch hands once the dumbbell gets past your forehead. Once it passes your head, you can then switch hands. 
Same as always, you can't have your offside on your leg, you can't be bouncing that dumbbell, both sides have that the same, on the ground at the same time. All that stuff's normal, but watch out for that rule. Make sure you don't get no reps just because you're changing at the wrong time, right? It's a lot of waste of energy, especially when you think about grip with double unders, bar muscle ups, ring muscle ups, the whole deal. Now, as well as with those muscle ups, your hands taper wraps. You can only do one or the other. You cannot tape and wrap the bar, right? You can't tape the bar and then wrap your hands. You have to pick one. Um, I know for me personally, if I tape, I tear. So for some of you, this is just a personal preference, preference, but get as much of an advantage as you can on that. We usually don't allow people to tape the pull-up bars when we do workouts at CrossFit Sore, but for this one, we're gonna allow people to do it so that way they get a little bit of an advantage on it. My wife is smiling probably right now that I said that. Because she's one of those people who don't let tape during the year normally. It's really dirty too, a lot of skin on the tape, it's pretty nasty. But for this workout, go for it. Now, if you're like 99.99% of the world, you're not getting through this workout. Your best bet to get the biggest score is you wanna push to end on double unders, because that is the quickest reps. So if you watched uh, Neil Maddox just do it, he end on double unders, he's able to crank, right? 30 seconds, you can get a lot of double unders in. So you wanna be aware of the clock, know what's going on, so when you get towards wherever the end of that 14 minutes is for you, you wanna fight to get to those double unders. You need the fight to get there. That is when it's worth it to fight once you get towards the end. All right, now I know some of you guys own gyms, you're trying to figure out what should I do for my athletes. If you do the intramural open like me, like we do at SOAR, we're doing a standard that you have to go RX, not just flail around and ring muscle ups, but you have to go RX if you have 10 unbroken double unders, seven pull up strict, and seven ring dips. So that way those people go RX and not scaled, because you can go scaled and get this big giant score, but does it really feel good? Now I'm not saying you go up to the ring muscle ups and just flail around and try one if you have no experience there, but we want you to race for the tiebreaker here at SOAR rather than feel really good about yourself and then bad a week later because you went scaled and crush it. All right, the open's a test. If you don't have the answers to the test, you don't have the answers, it's just the way it is. Now, when it comes to warm up, again, this warm up is based on the idea that you have these skills. If you don't have these skills, this warm up is helpful, but it's not gonna be super helpful for you because you need to work those skills, grease the groove a lot more. There's some of us, we need to do a lot more rotator cuff, upper back work to warm up for muscle ups, bar muscle ups, any type of kipping, go do that. This is a general template. We're gonna be adding and changing some things for athletes here as well, but this is a nice general warm up. And it might seem long, but we're gonna build on skills as we go through it. So the first thing we're gonna do is three minutes or so on a bike or rower just to get the body moving. Okay, wake up that aerobic system. And then we got two rounds, 30 single unders, five, five squat plus rotation. And we're gonna talk about this in a second. We have Nash showing us this. Crab crawl 30 feet, five beat swings. That's just five kips, but I want you to make sure you're nice and tight through your core. And then squeeze the toothpaste. So we're gonna have Nash show a couple of these real quick. So the first thing is gonna be the squat and rotation. Now, if you're part of the Bulletproof program, programs or Active Life, you might have seen this before. Nash is going to go into a squat and then rotate through that upper back, reaching towards the ceiling, 10 alternating, five per side. It's helpful to grab a bar to do it. It makes it a little bit easier to anchor yourself down. You're not going to stretch your upper back and your hips and your ankles, kind of prep those joints to move. And it's bonus points if you wear really sparkly shoes like Nash is right now as well. <laughs> so after that, we have a crab crawl for 30 feet. <laughs> This might be something different for you, but I find it very helpful for athletes to warm up any type of dip or muscle up is to extend and press as they go on a crab crawl. So if you take a look at Nast, we want to make sure that her shoulders don't shrug up into her ears. She doesn't need to go quite hips as high as that. She's going to press through the ground as she goes. Your hands can go in any direction you want. And the last one you probably never heard of on there is squeeze the toothpaste. And this is from our track and field days. Prep you for all those double unders since you might get through a lot of them. We want to go heel to the ground, press through our toes and stand, nice and controlled, take our ankles through full range of motion so we're nice and prepped. All right, now the second half of this warm up, everyone should know what these movements are. We're going to go 10 double unders, six overhead squats. I recommend that you snatch into the overhead squat for every round of this workout if you're trying to move fast. If that's a tough movement for you, obviously power snatch it. Clean and jerk it, go into it any way you want, but you are allowed to snatch it. You're gonna add weight between the two rounds, okay? Then you have two ring swings. We just did a video on that recently, plus one muscle up. 10 double unders again, six alternating dumbbell snatches. Maybe if you're an RX guy, start at 35, second round go 50. Then two bar kips plus one bar muscle up. Go through that twice, let's work up and weight on that overhead squat. If something doesn't feel right, spend time prepping it. You do not want to use this workout as a time to warm up. Mentally, it will fatigue you. Physically, you don't want that to happen. 
Now when it comes to tempo and pacing, this workout is so individualized based on your skills that I can't really prescribe you any way to go after this besides break before you're broken, don't get mentally fatigued or frustrated if things start falling apart a little bit, right? Calm yourself, have a mantra, muscle ups kinda go away, double unders do as well. Hope this helps guys, please comment below, share this video, let us know if we helped you out or if you guys have any questions. Talk to you soon.